Hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories, wise tales from storytellers around the world which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended from ages 5 to 105, I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello Super Great Kids, the story this week is from Norway. It's a Loki trickster story about giants and gods. You know how in the past people used to build big walls around their cities to keep the people safe? Well, this is the story about how the Norse gods put a wall around their beautiful city called Asgard to keep the big giants out. It's told by the wonderful storyteller Emily Hennessy. Can you think of any other stories you know which have giants in them? Have a little think while we have a word with the grown-ups. Hello, super great kids. Did you think of a story with a giant in it? How about the whistling giants in How the Mosquito Became? Remember that one? It's one of my favourites. Or Odon, the green-eyed giant who stomps on anyone smaller than him. Well, now, here's Emily Hennessy with another giant story. It's called The Wall of Asgard. Are you sitting comfortably? Mouth open. Story jump out. There were giants and there were gods. And, I must admit, they didn't get on. In fact... They hated each other. In fact, they were always at war. The giants had just attacked Asgard, the city of the gods. They had thrown huge rocks and boulders and brought down the buildings and halls. The fields were covered in dust and rubble. The golden apple trees lay fallen on the floor. The place was a mess. Odin. One-eyed Odin, the leader, the ruler of the gods. He knew that even if they rebuilt their beautiful city, the giants would just attack it all over again. They needed to find a way of protecting themselves, a way of protecting their lovely city. But what? How? Just at that moment... There was a knock on Odin's door. Odin answered the door and there in the doorway stood a figure in a long dark cloak with a hood covering his face. This was a man he didn't recognise. This was a complete stranger. But the stranger said, I know what you need, Odin. You need a wall. A wall of protection. A wall so high the birds can't fly over it. A wall so thick the snakes can't slither through it. A wall. A wall of protection, thought Odin. Hmm, I think you're right. That is exactly what we need. But Asgard is a huge city. This wall would need to be enormous. Nobody could build us a wall like that. There is one person who could, and that is me, said the stranger. Hmm, I see. And what would be your fee for building this wall? How much would it cost us? Oh, not much. I would just ask for the sun and the moon and Freya. The goddess of beauty. (laughs) Odin couldn't help himself. He laughed and laughed and laughed. (laughs) You want me to give you the sun and the moon and Freya? (laughs) Well, I don't think she'd be too happy about that. And we would not be too happy about losing the sun and the moon. You ask too much. Now leave us in peace. 
But then Odin felt somebody pulling at his elbow and he turned around and there was Loki with bright red spiky hair with freckles across his face and a glint in his eye. Loki, the shapeshifter, mischief maker, the fire starter, scoundrel, greatest trickster of them all. Tell him we'll give him what he wants, said Loki, but only if he manages to finish the whole wall before the first day of spring. <laughs> the first day of spring is... Only a few weeks away, it's impossible, said Odin. Exactly. Look, he's big, he's strong. He might build half of it, he might build a bit more. We'll never finish it in time. We'll get what he does build for free and we'll finish the rest ourselves over the next few years. Hmm, it's not a bad idea, said Odin. And so he went back to the stranger and he said... We will give you the sun and the moon and Freya just as you ask, but only if you finish the wall before the first day of spring. The stranger thought about this for a moment and then smiled and nodded and said, fine, but only if you let me use my horse. <laughs> Odin couldn't see a problem with that. And so they spat into their hands and shook. The stranger he set to work straight away. His horse, a huge black stallion, was waiting for him down the hill just outside Asgard. The stranger loaded up rocks and boulders into a net attached to the horse, and when the net was full, the horse dragged it back up the hill. And there the stranger unloaded the rocks and boulders and began to build the wall. At first, all the gods and goddesses, they gathered around and watched and they pointed and they laughed because he worked so slowly. This wall would never be finished in time. Asgard was huge. But then they stopped laughing and pointing because they realised that although he worked slowly, he never stopped. He and his horse, well, they never stopped to rest or to sleep or to eat or to drink. And over the next few days and weeks, day by day and night by night, the wall grew taller and wider. It was the day before the first day of spring and the stranger had just one little gap left in the wall to finish. Odin was furious. He found Loki sunbathing under one of the apple trees. He's about to finish the wall, Loki. You, you've got us into this mess. Now you get us out of it or we'll lose the sun and the moon and Freya. I haven't even told Freya about this. She'll be. But Loki just smiled. Don't worry, he said. I know exactly what to do. The stranger was loading the last few rocks and boulders onto the net, smiling to himself. He knew that this wall would soon be finished and he would have won. He knew that there were just a few little gaps left in the wall. He needed some smaller rocks, some smaller boulders. And so he turned away from his stallion and he began to walk along the river to collect these rocks and boulders in his arms. And he didn't notice that trotting down the hill came a beautiful young mare, a young female horse. But the stallion, the big, strong, black stallion, noticed. He noticed that this young mare had a lovely red coat and long eyelashes. And this little mare, she came up to the stallion and she began to kiplash, kiplash, kiplash with her eyelashes and wee, wee, wee with her tail. And she danced and she pranced in front of the stallion and the stallion had never seen anything as lovely as this little mare. He'd never had a friend before. He'd never had a companion before, certainly not one as lovely as this one. 
and he began to pull at the net. He began to pull at his harness, and he heaved and he heaved until the harness snapped. The stranger heard the sound of the harness snapping. He spun around just in time to see his horse galloping off into the distance after that little red-coated mare. The stranger dropped the rocks in his arms and began to give chase. The first day of spring arrived and the gods and the goddesses, they gathered around and they saw that the wall was not quite finished. There was still that little gap left and the stranger, the wall builder, was nowhere to be seen and neither was his horse. And so the gods and the goddesses celebrated. They feasted and they danced and they wove flowers into their hair and life was good. There was only one god who wasn't there that day and that was Loki. He didn't come back until Midsummer's Day. Walking alongside him was a lovely young foal with a black coat, a red mane, and eight legs. Before Odin could grab Loki, because he was still furious with him, Loki said, Odin, 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 I have a present for you. Look, this little foal, this is Slepnir. He will be the fastest horse in all of the nine worlds and I give him as a gift to you. All of Odin's anger and fury vanished when he saw this beautiful little foal. Loki was let off the hook, for now at least. As for the stranger... He did eventually find his horse and come back. He pulled back his hood to reveal who he really was. A giant in disguise. And he was not happy. He had been tricked. He picked up a rock and was about to hurl it at Asgard when Thor the god of thunder, lifted his mighty hammer and brought it crashing down. The rock smashed into tiny pieces that scattered across the ground. Your head will be next, said Thor. Then the giant scowled and turned and fled. That giant never did come back to Asgard. Asgard had its wall of protection now. And the city was safe, for a while at least. And Odin's foal, Slepnir, the foal with its eight legs, did become the fastest horse in all of the nine worlds. But there was still one question left hanging in the air. Who was that lovely red-coated mare? Only Loki, the greatest shapeshifter knew the answer to that. Thanks for that story, Emily. And thank you for listening. Did you figure out what Loki the shapeshifter changed into? I wonder what you'd change into if you could shift your shape into anything you wanted. Would you be a little red pony? Or a shark? Or a unicorn? Now, super great kids, you've been sending in some stunning pictures this week. Thanks to Eleanor, who is four from Sprotley in England, or Planet Earth, as Eleanor puts it. She sent a magnificent picture of the story Mrs. Rabbit and the Fox. And thanks to super great kids story followers Bella, who is six, and her brother Jack, who is five, who like listening to our stories on the way to school. Jack sent in an awesome picture of a very smiley crab king. Oh, and thanks to Rowan from Maine, who is four and a half, and sent in a beautiful picture of the white elephant, who is carefully decorated with rainbows and brilliant colours. Thank you, Rowan. 
Your elephant is magnificent. Super great kids, you have one more week to send in your drawings for a chance to win a super great kids t-shirt. So, keep sending them in. Send them to me via the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash super great kids stories. And a very big thanks to all adults who are supporting us on Apple Podcasts. And to all of you who've given a donation on Ko-fi, really appreciated. If you'd like to support us, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, where you can listen ad-free, get early access to the next story, and get one super great bonus story a month. Or you can go to ko-fi.com forward slash super great kids stories and give a one-off payment. And finally, thanks to Rahul, age six, whose favourite story is How the Snakes Got Their Poison. And to all of you who've been saying kind things about us on Apple Podcasts Reviews. We love all those stars. Hurrah! And next week, it's our first birthday and we're going to give you a special bonus birthday story. That's it for now. See you soon. Keep telling those stories. And thanks very much to our sponsors.